guys, this is Kathy here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's World. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here with me today. And today we're doing my five book reading wrap up. Yes, I finally finished. I am not the fastest of readers. I get kind of distracted sometimes. I had a decent five book reading wrap up. Um, two I did not finish. Two I gave fives to because they're nonfiction and I tend to give fives to nonfiction. And the other one was just an enjoyable read. So let's get started. I started with Lisa Jewell's Watching You. Watching You by Lisa Jewell. The genre is thriller, mystery, fiction. Goodreads, Goodreads gave it 3.93 out of 5 stars, and I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. I'm going to read to you a little synopsis I got on Amazon. In Lisa Jewell's latest bone thrilling suspense, no one is who they seem. Jewell teases out her twisty plot at just the right pace until the startling revelations on the very last page. The read says, Melville Heights is one of the nicest neighborhoods in Bristol, England, home to doctors and lawyers and old money academics. It's not the sort of place where people are brutally murdered in their own kitchens, but it is the sort of place where everyone has a secret and everyone is watching you. The quote that I happened to like was, but nothing was often everything in forensics. Nothing could often be the answer to the whole bloody thing. I know when I, um, I took a computer to my attorney during my divorce, and I said, this is probably nothing. And she said, Kathy, nothing is nothing. Give me that computer. And from there, it went to digital forensics, and all kinds of things ensued. In this book, yes, everybody is watching everybody. A young boy watches the girls from his window and all the goings on in the community. An older man watches the younger girls. Younger girls watch him. And everybody's watching everybody. It starts off with a murder, though. And there is also some evidence found immediately within the book. I believe it was a red tassel was found and a little bit of blood on, on the kitchen floor where the murder took place. And from there, you learn about the people in the town. You learn about the victim of the murder. And there's twists and turns throughout this book. It was a really good book. It was a bit slow for me at times. That's why I gave it a 3.5 rather than a higher score. But overall, this was a very good book. I did put a book trailer on my blog for you, and I'll link that in the description box below. And I couldn't find anything about a movie on this book, although I think it would make a good movie. I think I would enjoy it. All right, so 3.5. Enjoyable read. The next book I read was Obsessed, and this is by Alison Britz, A Memoir of My Life with OCD. The genre for this book is memoir, nonfiction, and mental health. Goodreads gave it 3.94 out of 5 stars, and I gave it 5 out of 5 because I tend to do that with nonfiction. I mean, people are telling their stories. Who am I to judge their story of? All I know about OCD is monk, sad to say. I think I might have a touch of it because sometimes I'm out walking my dog. I think I check my pocket several times to make sure I know where my keys are. Maybe that's a mild, mild, mild form of OCD. And sometimes I'll think, did I lock the door when I know I did, but I'd still go back and check it. Maybe that's a mild form. But this poor young girl, she was in school. I think she was in high school at the time. It started out with a nightmare, actually. And in the nightmare, she had brain cancer or brain tumor or something along that line. And then from there on in, every little thing she did, she thought might lead to an increase in her cancer or harm to her parents or harm to herself. So in her mind, in order to decrease the chances of her cancer growing or harm, or harm coming to her parents, she had to do specific things that this voice inside of her head, not an audible voice, I believe, but just this strong feeling in her head that she had to avoid in order to protect herself and her parents from harm. And so she would believe that if she stepped on a crack in the sidewalk, she would suddenly, her cancer would increase. If she wore a certain clothing, her chances of her parents dying in a car accident or something horrible would happen. And so it started with cracks and it went on to just about everything, the clothing she wore. She would bargain with this voice in her head that, okay, I did step on a crack, so now I'll forego food. And she became very skinny. She was a great student, and her grades started to drop because the voice in her head said, if you fail this test, maybe your parents won't be in a car accident. And a debilitating illness, I had no idea, and it seems to me to be based in fear. So it goes through her story of how her OCD developed, and then it goes into her story about how she 
conquered it. I guess you could say somewhat conquered it or began to conquer it with the help of a, a therapist. Really very, very interesting book. Um, I feel bad laughing at the monk show now because it's such a debilitating illness. I had no idea. So this is very good. I would recommend it if you're curious about OCD. It really did teach me a lot. I could not find a movie trailer on this book and I could not find a movie based on this book, but I think it would make a good movie. It would be a good teaching theme for people to understand people going through OCD and it's not, it's much worse than poor old monk. <laughs> All right, the next book, this book. I got this through a book subscription box. I was really disappointed in it. Granted, I did not finish it. This is called Lights All Night Long by Lydia Fitzpatrick. Genre is fiction, cultural, coming of age. And Goodreads gave it, Goodreads gave it 3.93 out of five stars, and I gave it a lowly one. And granted, I did not finish it. I, I started this book and I was excited about the premise of it. Uh, this young boy from Russia, teenage boy, he has a brother in Russia, I think, who is arrested and in trouble with the law for whatever reason. And he goes to a sponsor home, I believe it was in Louisiana. This kid was so angry, and I could deal with his anger, and I was hoping he'd come out of it, and maybe he does. But the crudity was too much for me. He was so crude and debasing of women, I just didn't want to go there anymore. And there's one person I read her review, and her, her statement was something along the lines of, most boys narrating the story are very crude, so get ready, just be prepared. I didn't want to go on that ride. So after about page 80 to 90, I said, I don't even have to, to listen to anymore. So I did not read it, although it got really good reviews. I didn't find anything about a movie, but I did find a book trailer, which I put on my blog for you. And I think it would probably be a good book if I'd have gotten through the crudity, but I just don't enjoy books like that. Now this book, At the Wolf's Table by Rosella Posterino. I was really intrigued with the theme of this book. The genre of this book is historical fiction, fiction, and it's based in the World War II. Reads gave it 3.54 stars, and I gave it two out of five. It started out really, really well, and I love the premise, and I, I love the early 1900s. I like to read about the early 1900s. I'm kind of intrigued with that time period. So I thought I would really enjoy this book, and I was very excited about it. Uh, the theme is, the historical fiction theme is, that based in Hitler's time, they would, I can't say recruit, they would choose women who would have no choice. Some of them were for Hitler and some were not, but they would have no choice but to go to the wolf's table and be a taster for Hitler. I thought, well, that's so interesting to, to read about what happened during those times. So they would um, prepare the meals, give these, I think there were 10 girls at the table, or young women, they would give them the food and they would be expected to eat it and they would just wait. Wait to see if they were poisoned, wait to see if everything was fine, and I guess if the food was fine, it went from there to Hitler. And so in the beginning, it was, it was more focused on the historical fiction. You learned a little bit about the women who were at the table. You learned about the food they prepared. You learned about the fear that they had that they may die. And on occasion, they would get sick. Basically, it was not poison though. It might be something else that caused their illness. But then it seemed to take a turn. I mean, I was really enjoying the book. I was intrigued by it. I wanted to see what was going to happen. But then about halfway through, it took a turn. And in that turn, it went from historical fiction to more fiction and infidelity and extramarital affairs and all this sex going on. I thought, I just did not want to read about that. I wanted to hear about the historical fiction. I'm sure there was some illicit affairs going on, but that's not why I wanted to read this book. So I quickly lost interest because it didn't seem to be going anywhere near the historical fiction anymore for me. So I put it down, I gave it a two per five because the beginning was really good. And maybe the ending was, I don't know. But I did not finish the book, I set it aside. It sounds like there may be a movie coming out, but I couldn't find any specifics on it. It would probably make a good movie if they would focus more on the history and the relationship of the women around the table and Hitler and not about all this extramarital affairs and infidelity is just not for me. The next book and the last book I read was also nonfiction. It's called Tears of Salt, A Doctor's Story on the Refugee Crisis. And this is by, I'm not going to say it right, Pietro Bartola and Lydia Tilota. 
<laughs> no, I said that wrong. I think they're Italian or somewhat close to that. This book was nonfiction. It was medical. It was a biography. It was about social themes and it's about refugees. And Goodreads gave it 4.27 stars and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. The theme of the book basically takes place on an island off Italy's coast. And on this island, a lot of refugees come from various different war-torn countries, poverty, just horrible things happening. They're trying to escape their situation in hopes of finding something better. So the, the first chapter, I believe, starts off with, I believe it's this guy. He's a teenager. He's out fishing with his family. That's what they do for a living. He falls off the boat and he thinks he's going to drown. So it's that was a very traumatic time in his life. And he goes on to be sent to, sent away for school. He becomes a doctor. And in becoming a doctor, he comes back home where he greets the refugees. He tries to save the ones that are injured. He treats the ones that are sick and he takes care of the people that have died and helps take care of their bodies and get them to where they need to be. Many, 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 many sad stories of the refugees. Um, I found myself crying with the refugee stories and I also found myself crying with the sacrifice of the author and his family. Having to split the family up so that others can become educated or very painful story all the way around and it, it brought me to tears many times. So this is a really good story and it's lightning to let us know what's going on in the world around us. Sometimes I think we get kind of caught, we get kind of caught up in our own issues which are painful to us but then we read about these issues that are just horrific for these people and it kind of brings things back into perspective so this is a really good book i would recommend it couldn't find anything about a book trailer for this book i could not find anything about a movie in regard to this book either so overall pretty good reading month i enjoyed this one it was painful this one just got a little too out there for me this one was too crude this one, another nonfiction, was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. And Lisa Jules watching you, it was good. It wasn't great. It was a bit slow at times, but I did enjoy it. It was a good read. I look forward to reading it every night. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me for my five book reading review. And I can't wait to pick out my next five books. I'd love to know what you guys are reading. Put it in the description box below for me, and I'll check it out. You guys take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.